Hi everyone, I'm Kelly O'Horo, and this is Adaptable Behavior Explained. Hi there everybody, thank you so much for tuning in today to Adaptable Behavior Explained. I'm your host, Kelly O'Horo, I'm an EMDR therapist, and I have tremendous passion about helping people understand the why behind their behavior, especially when those behaviors don't seem to make sense. Today, we're gonna explore a powerful and really eye-opening topic. Could I go back to school and just spend all of my time geeking out about the biology of how we work? I would absolutely get a doctorate in the topic of today, which is epigenetics. And this is basically how trauma can be passed down through generations, not just through the stories or family dynamics, but biologically. You are carrying and your body is carrying echoes of your grandparents' experiences, your parents' experiences, and I can't tell you how many times someone will sit down in my office and they will say things like, I'm so anxious, but I have no reason to be so. So if you've ever wondered why do you feel a certain way about something or uh, behave in certain ways and nothing in your life adds up to explain why this is, then you're going to like this episode on epigenetics. So first we're going to talk about what that even is. We got to know about the basics. Epigenetics is the study of how our environment and our experiences can influence the way our genes are expressed without changing the actual DNA sequence. If you think about your DNA as the hardware of the computer, your body, your brain, uh, it's the same in every cell. But epigenetics, that's the software. It's the part of our body that tells the hardware what to do, when to do it, and how much to do it. So here's the fascinating part about this topic and why I could just go to school. Like I said, I could learn about this so much because it's so fascinating. It, this software can be influenced by things like stress, our trauma, our diet, and even nurture or lack thereof. In some cases, those changes are passed down to future generations. And so your body might be running programs that were installed by your ancestors' experiences. And so when I talk about history taking, when I, when I teach my therapists that work for me how to do this, I talk about starting with our great grandparents and grandparents and then the parent person's parents' histories because we are carrying at least two generations worth of material that is helping to inform the way our software or our code runs. And so it's really important that when you think about the why and how you show up and how you interact and how you trust or don't trust, how you're anxious how you're not anxious, how perhaps you show up even more uh, with depressive traits, oftentimes we're not just looking at our life itself. Sometimes we're looking at our parents and our grandparents' experiences. I can remember thinking, and this is before I was a trauma therapist, I was watching uh, my youngest son play, and he was lining everything up. And I think most people would describe me as anxious. I'm sure I meet criteria for generalized anxiety. I think most people who are high achievers tend to meet criteria for that. But the kind of anxious I'm talking about when I was watching my son isn't this kind of anxious. It was pragmatic. It was almost obsessive. And he's lining things up in size and color order. And he's so determined that they things must be this way and got very upset if it was knocked out of place. And I remember looking at my husband and going, I don't think this is anything I've done to him. <laughs> I mean, I'll take accountability that there's plenty that, that have definitely, you know, influenced it. But I think this is the anxiety that our parents had and our grandparents had. And so the, the display of behavior across generations is this whole study of epigenetics. Uh, there's growing evidence that trauma doesn't just affect a person and th who experiences it. We can have vicarious trauma, and we can understand that our experiences shape the way our children and our grandchildren show up. So, for example, how we learned about this is through the studies of Holocaust survivors. Basically, we had so many people that had gone through such treacherous experiences, and they were all having offspring or reproducing, and in those offspring, we were seeing... Uh, behaviors and altered levels of cortisol and stress hormones in the offspring, even though their life didn't justify those levels. And so even though they didn't live through the trauma themselves, their bodies seemed to carry the imprint of the experience that happened to their parents and their grandparents. Another example of where we started to get curious about this topic is during uh, the Dutch hunger winter during World War II. So babies were born to mothers who were pregnant during the famine, uh, and they were more likely to develop obesity, diabetes, 
heart disease uh, later in life. And their children, which was the grandchildren of those who starved, also showed signs of metabolic changes. So it's pretty fascinating that we actually inherit more than just our eye color and our height. We can inherit stress, stress responses, emotional behavior patterns, and even vulnerabilities to mental health conditions. And it's all part of not just what we went through in our lives, but our parents and our grandparents. And so I talk a lot about on this show adaptation and trauma and the experiences that we go through and how we have to learn to adapt in order to navigate current environmental stress or the stimulus that we're faced with. And so when you think about the history, right, trauma, epigenetics, what does it mean for our mental health? As a therapist, I often work with people who don't understand why they feel a certain way. They, they'll tell me, my life was fine. My parents were great. I had good enough parents. And I go, they probably were. And, and they were certainly trying the very best they could with what they have. And I often operate with a generous assumption that that is how people are. But when we take the family history and we look at something like a genogram or a trauma egg in some models, and we start to peel back the layers of what someone's story shows us, Oftentimes, those behaviors or those anxieties are not from their life itself. And I'll even do implicit work with people, and I'll say, you know, I know you're feeling anxious. I know your mom had anxiety. I know your dad, you know, was struggling with the things that you described. But I want you to close your eyes, and I want you to tune in. And if you could think about mom and think about how much you're carrying that's yours and how much you're carrying that's hers, if you could split this pie chart up, what percentage would you give back to mom that you know is hers and isn't yours? And without fail, I have never had a client that didn't just know. They would come with an answer like, oh, it's like 80% hers. It's not even mine. And so part of the work that we're able to do, which is so fun and fascinating, is almost give back the percentage of whatever that expression of a trait is to the parent. We lean into what thwarted experiences, emotions, and behaviors that happened in the generations before us. And we acknowledge, we validate, we feel the feelings that were oftentimes not able to be expressed. And in so doing, we're able to relieve generational show. We're able to reduce the, I guess, a universal energy, I think it's what it feels like, is we're able to release or free generations past, of course, ourselves. And then what's even more fascinating is we're able to change the way our RNA shows up and our offspring don't necessarily have to carry it if we do our trauma work before we reproduce. So sometimes the anxiety and the depression or the hypervigilance we feel isn't just ours. It's not just our story. It's about our family's story. So let me give you another example. Let's say your grandmother lived through war. She developed hypervigilance. She's always scanning for danger. She needed to do so as a survival mechanism because the history dictates the other shoe's going to drop because she's seen that happen. And that pattern may have been passed down, not just through behavior, but biologically. So you might feel anxious in safe situations or have a propensity to scan environments because your nervous system is still wired for that danger. Um, so what looks like dysfunction in you might just be an adaptation. Your body's trying to protect you based on whatever information was inherited. And what was useful generationally uh, in past isn't maybe necessary now. And so we're adapted to be ready in that fight, that freeze, that flee stance when it's no longer necessary. And so when you're thinking about how you show up, really get curious about what did your parents carry? What did they go through? Because that data, that information gives us a lot to work with. So there's a lot of good news about learning about this. These epigenetic changes aren't permanent. Just like any stance that we have now, any state that we are experiencing, any traits that we've in inherited and that we show up, those are influenced by our experience, and that means they can be changed. So we've learned them generationally in our family history, sometimes in our current environmental lives and things that we've been through and sometimes past. But all of those adaptations are things that our brains had to learn in order to adapt, and they can be unlearned. So the kind of therapy that I love uh, is EMDR therapy. That's where my specialty lies. I, I like combining that with things like somatic experiencing and sensory motor modalities. Uh, anything mindful-based is going to really address the way we cellularly store information because our trauma that feels inherited that we can't experience is in our cells. And so we can treat this kind of trauma and use tools, like I said before, genograms, family trees. And these, these uh, maps can help us 
really learn about emotional patterns, things that uh, will inform and help us understand why we might be carrying what we're carrying. And the thing that I love the most about approaching life and understanding about adaptations from this lens is because it helps us to unshame ourselves a lot more quickly. If we recognize the why, we understand what happened to people that we inherited things from and what happened to their parents and so on and so forth, it makes so much more sense. We can start to shift the narrative. It's not that I'm anxious. It's that I was a little predisposed to be prepped for danger. And when we understand that our struggles might have deeper roots, we can start to let go of the shame and the self-blame about those uh, attributes and those traits. We're not broken. You're not broken. You're adapted. And when we think about those adaptations as something that we can work with, we can heal. We can rewire because what fires together wires together, and we can change the story for our next generation if we really get curious about it and we want to dig in. Um, I just love that there's this information out there now and that it's not just theory. We understand it. We can see the way our genes line up. We can see the propensities. We can see the behaviors that show up in our offspring. And we can see so many changes that have happened from the past to the present. Epigenetics shows us that trauma can echo across generations. And you're, you're carrying more than your own story. And that's okay. What you're experiencing might be inherited. Um, it might be an adaptation. And certainly it's not a personal flaw. It's not something to be judged. Anything that we learned we can understand what we learned. We can decide what we're ready to give up. We can learn where we learned it, and we can unlearn it to gain something that's more adaptive for today's self, today's circumstances, and today's environment. And that's where the freedom lies. Healing is absolutely possible. And so I'd love you to take some time and just reflect what patterns in your life might be roots from your family's past. I think it's exciting. Read more about it. I'm going to shoot a blog about this because I want to go ahead and cite the research and share with you a lot about um, you know, where this data comes from and make it a little bit digestible. But if this episode resonates with you, please subscribe, leave a review, give us your feedback on it, talk about things that you made connections about because of what you've thought about because of this show, share it with us. Share the show with someone that might need to hear it, someone who's talking to you about they don't know why they act the way they act, and maybe this can help them start to put some pieces of their own puzzle together. So connect with me on social media, kellyohoro.com, Instagram, kellyohoro, or any of the links in my show notes. So thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope that you found this helpful. And remember, you are adaptable and understanding your story is the first step towards hearing. So thanks again for listening. And until we meet again, don't forget to lead with love. It'll never steer you wrong.